My name is Corbin Reed and welcome to my channel. I am a storyteller by trade. I love stories. I'm an actor and a writer and a director, but I also have an immense passion for design and for storytelling through design. And some of that comes through in my collection and my love for antique and vintage pieces, you know, curating collections that are old and they um, just by nature of them having been around a long time. They have a patina and a weathering to them that just by looking at them you can tell they have a story. And some of that is just in newer pieces, knowing the designer's process or their inspiration behind the piece. There's a story in that. Everything on my channel will be centered around creating in places that tell interesting stories. I'll be doing shop with me's, hauls, makeovers, a little bit of DIY, some artist profiles. So, if any of that sounds of interest to you, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss out on any of the fun and hit the notification bell so that you can get alerted when I post a new video. And without further ado, let's get into this. So, I'm in New York City right now. I am filming season two of a show that I am on called Run the World and I'm living in New York City, but I have a home in Los Angeles um, that was purchased about a year ago. Um, and I live there with my fiance. And um, it's a new build and I've been slowly infusing character into it with these, you know, story-filled items. And it's just become a love and a passion and a bit of an obsession. Um, so when I got to New York and I got to this um, apartment that I'm airbnb and uh, it's a new build. I was like, I need to just bring some decor in here that makes it feel like a homey lived in space because two and a half months, well, really more like three months, is a long time to be away from home and I want it to feel comfortable. And these are pieces that I can bring back to my home. They're in my color palette um, and I can use them in Los Angeles so I didn't feel too bad about that. And I thought, how fun would it be to share with you guys how I designed this space. Um, you know, maybe you don't have this exact situation where you're, you're leaving home for three months at a time for work, but a lot of people are in rentals and they don't wanna do permanent changes to the, they can't do permanent changes to the walls or whatever, to the space. And decor is a really, really um, wonderful way to, um, an impermanent way to home up your space and to make it feel lived and storied and lived in and storied and beautiful. So I did a haul where I showed you where I what I got specifically for this apartment and it ran a little long. So I'm splitting this up, this haul up into two videos. Um, this portion is going to be styling my kitchen and living room and then the other portion will be styling the bedroom. Um, so, Let's get into the first part of this video. Really beautiful um, vintage uh, ceramic Chinese, I believe they're called bean pots. 
and um, these are like, they can be hundreds of years old. I'm not sure exactly how old this one is. I got this one off of a website called meridian.com and I can link, they have like a vintage collection and they have a lot of these on there. Um, they can be a little bit pricey, but I just feel like it's this sort of really pretty green, earthy tone, neutral color. Um, it's very, like for me, like I said, my palette is like black and white and stone and ceramic and um, you know, linens and brass and, and things like that. So I like that this is a bit more of like a, a green color. I, it's just having earth tones in my house just feels very relaxing and warm to me, like you're bringing the outside in. So again, it's, it's pretty old. It's gotta be at least a, cu a couple hundred years old. And you know, the stories this tells, just looking at it, I mean, it has chip marks. It's got, it's got this kind of weird indent on the side. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like got this weird dip. It's like imperfect. Um, so I really like this and I have this styled with some olive branches on my kitchen island. <sighs> These I actually have at home, but I, I, my, I live in a town home and it's four floors. And so I, and I love having florals around, but I'm like the flower killer. I kill everything. Um, so I really, really have grown to love faux florals. This is an olive branch. I got this off of Amazon. It's like a 20, I wanna say it's 24 inches long. Um, I think it looks pretty realistic, like the leaves. If you, olive branches really do have like a white sort of underpinning on them. Um, but I love these. They came in a pack of four. Uh, and you really don't need more than four in a vase. Um, so recently I went up to Hudson, New York which is about two hours outside of the city. It's this really beautiful town, upstate New York. Um, you can take the train up there. And it's this town just full of antique and vintage furniture. Um, but anyways, I also got some decor pieces that I thought were really cool. So I'll share those with you guys. Um, the first one are these antique French linen tea towels. These are from like, I wanna say, I believe they're from the 1800s. Um, but they have this really beautiful sort of like red stripe running through them, this really thick, solid um, linen texture. I've seen these, I just like, think they're cool. I'm not gonna use them like to actually as towels because they're just too beautiful. Like I love the texture. This one has, actually has like a burn mark on it. I didn't care. I really liked the, the color and I really liked um, the way it felt. I like holding things and, see, and seeing how they feel. But these French linen tea towels, the owner of the shop goes to the south of France twice a year and she comes back with all of these gorgeous things. They're so beautiful. So I got these from her. Again, they're from the late 1800s. And I'm just using them right now underneath this stone bowl. She's heavy. <laughs> underneath this stone bowl that I got, um, on Etsy and I'm sort of putting them together. I'll show you later, but I'm using this as a salt cellar. So I like textures. So this one is like sort of, it's got this sort of more grainy texture and, and I have some um, Maldon sea salt flakes in here, which, oh my God, if you haven't tried Maldon sea salt flakes, you get on that. But, um, and then I have the tea towels underneath it and it just creates this really beautiful vignette and then like the salt crystals sparkling in the bowl. And then you put one of these gold spoons in there. And then anytime I wanna use the salt flakes, which I do basically almost every day to season my, food, season my food, it's like a moment. It's a moment and I'm here for it. I'm starting to realize I've gotten a lot of stuff for this apartment. <laughs> when I put it all together, I'm just like, oh my God, girl, you've been shopping. Um, but my place looks great, so like, whatever. Anyways, the next thing I'm gonna share, this is a found wooden bowl, is what they call it. It's not, um, it's not vintage, but it looks aged. The wood looks aged. It's so big. It's so big, but it's so beautiful. Look at this honking, gorgeous piece. I mean, it's Heavy, baby, heavy. I use this currently for my snacks on top of the fridge. The fridge is so 
blah. It's just like this big stainless steel hunk. Most people's fridges are. And it's very prominent, like it's not like pushed into the wall, but I put this on top of it and like it makes it look pretty and then it hides the labels of the snacks. Like I don't have to look at the snacks. There aren't that many cabinets here um, and the cabinets are like hard to get to and I like to be able to see my snacks, otherwise they'll get stale. So I put the snacks in here. It's kind of, it's just deep enough and I can kind of see them sticking out the top so I know they're there and they're easy for me to just snatch, grab, put back. Super easy. I also had this, you could use this on a, on a counter. You could put fruit in here. I even put the ceramic vase in here at one point and put a candle in here. And then I would put, um, I have a, a wick trimmer and an electric lighter uh, also, and it was just like a little moment. This, I have been wanting this for a long time. Now in my house in LA, I have an accent wall that I created in my kitchen in this really deep uh, forest green. It's actually like the color of this, this is my iPhone cover. Um, I've been watching a lot of British uh, uh, design shows and there are these designers that um, called Duval, Duval Kitchens, and they use this color in like so many of their, their spaces on the walls and on the cabinetry, and I'm just like seeing it, I'm just like green crazy. I love this like bluish, blackish green. I painted this on the wall in my kitchen, and it just makes me feel like I'm bringing the outside in. But what goes really well with this is copper. So I created a copper railing wall in my kitchen and I thought it would be cool to have another, excuse me, my sinuses, another copper item in my kitchen. So I got this really beautiful vintage replica of a copper teapot off of Amazon. Now this is Turkish, um, but I believe it was under $100 on Amazon and it's got, it's copper, I, I, it's got like a variation in color and it's got this really beautiful wood handle it works so well. It does not whistle. I will link this down below, but it's got this really beautiful detailing on the spout. Just so much character. It's just jewelry for my stove. Like again, the stove is fine. It's silver and black and boring, but when you put this on it, it looks like an event. And I drink a lot of tea, so it's just nice to have pieces like this to make the kitchen feel a little more high-end. More vintage, these chapati trays. They are these marble carved chapati trays. And um, I, you see a lot of these as like wood risers, but these are not wood. I got this one as well. This is on my kitchen counter. Um, I use this one to prop up the bean pot. And I also put a candle on here and I put like um, the wick cutter and the lighter and that creates a little organized moment for those items to corral those items and again adds character because it's vintage and it's got all these markings on it and i believe these are originally used to um knead bread i use this one i have some amber colored um pumps and a spray bottle for like the cleaning solution and um also for uh the dish soap and the hand soap next to the sink i put them on top of this because if you Marble is really durable. Water gets underneath the, when you're washing your hands or you're washing the dishes, the water can get underneath the, the dispensers and then it gets like grimy and dirty. But if you have it on this riser, it kind of creates a space for the water to evaporate. So it's just less messy. messy. And again, trays, risers, it's a really good way to corral items, make things look intentional, make things look neat. And if it's vintage and it's got the beautiful sort of hand carved. I highly recommend getting pieces like this if you can find them at your local vintage stores or on Etsy. I found mine on Etsy. I will try and link some down below that are similar um, for you to find yourself. This is too big for me to hold up, but this is part of the hall that I used to style my living room and you'll see it again in LA. It's a rug from the Middle East that's been dyed with vegetable dye and there's some fading on it, but I didn't care. I was so drawn to the moody colors and um, you're gonna see this again later but you're gonna see it in the style with me to the living room because I bought this at antique warehouse next 
thing I thought I could live without but could not live without here in this Airbnb is coffee table books. I didn't want to bring any from home and now I have to ship them back. But they're so important to me because I like crave the visual stimulation. But also I love learning about interior design and I was like, there were other ones that I wanted to get and I'll, they're great for styling too. Like you stack them up, put a riser on top, put a candle on top, on your coffee table, on a console table. They're just great. They're great to have. And I usually look for ones that have, you know, neutral bindings or have like images that I really love or contents that I really love. So one that I'm going to highly recommend to you that I picked up is called Patina Homes. And it's um, this couple, Steve and Brooke Giannetti, and they re modeled this home in Ojai, California. And their home is a work of art. I mean, a lot of these pieces are vintage and an antique. Um, the husband grew up in like a limestone workshop with his father and his family and they carved like sculptures and they worked on, you know, paving walkways and building homes out of limestone. So he's like a limestone expert. So a lot of their detailing in their home is limestone base, which is just so gorgeous and also really luxurious. Um, this is one I can link down below. I got this off of Amazon. Another coffee table book that I got recently that I really adore is called Curate. This woman, um, her name's Linda, and she is really into vintage, similarly to me. I feel like our styles are very similar. Like you get these sort of like the rustic stools. I have a stool obsession you'll see when I show you um, some elements in my home in LA. The stone, you know, the the, the antique vases with the, the antique photographs, the neutral color palette. She really likes white, but she also loves these greens like I do, the leather, um, the aged leather. You know, it's very, she likes things that you look at them and they tell a story and then spaces that look collected. And she's all about curating a home, taking your time, um, making designing a home around how people live. Um, and, you know, doing things with a level of craftsmanship and quality that take time and also take imagination. So this is a great one. The last one I'll recommend that I got uh, is called Made of Wood. Oh my God, this book. I love primitive wood. I think it's another antique realm that I've gotten into in the last sort of like year since owning a home and designing a home. It just adds so much to a space. All of the people that are featured in this book uh, design their homes, made their homes. Some of their homes are made entirely of wood and some of them are just, um, decorated with primitive wood items or rustic wood items. Some of them are newer wood items, like some of them are like, you know, Danish modern or whatever, but I like the ones that are older. I mean, this mix between like the linen and the primitive wood is just so yummy. Look at this piece. I mean, come on. This antique dresser with the marble on top. This is someone's, um, this, I believe this was a couple's workspace. Everything in here is like, you know, old, old, like 1800s old, which is that's what I love. There's so much texture in every room. Look at those walls in this room. Ugh. So if you're into interior design, you're looking for inspiration, you're, or you're just looking to like figure out what your style is when you antique shop, pick up some, some books that reflect your interests and you'll get inspiration and like you'll see pieces like in here that you like and then when you go out and you find them, you know to get them because they fit in with your style. It's kind of hard sometimes to like imagine or just like come up with it on your own but if you see, you know, a prep table or a stool or whatever in one of these books and one of the spaces, you the odds of you finding them somewhere at an antique store or a vintage store 
after like like on your own if you're looking are pretty good like I've I've managed to find a lot of the things that I've seen in books I don't know that I would have known to look for them or how I would have wanted to style them if I wasn't looking for the inspiration in these coffee table books print Pinterest is really good for that as well last piece is this really pretty vintage primitive wood stool these are so versatile guys i mean if you follow interior design at all you know that these get used all the time you can put it next to a sofa i have it like this apartment's really small but there's no entryway and i just like to have something near the um entryway to sit on and put my shoes on or like when i come in if i have like a purse or a bag or something i can put it on here and also it's just pretty to look at it's so pretty, it's so pretty. They call these Chinese, antique Chinese wood stools. I think this wood is over 100 years old. The places and spaces and the stories this wood has been through. Just looking at it makes me happy. This could be really pretty in a kitchen, um, just to like bring some warmth into a kitchen. I have one in my kitchen at home, um, or in a bathroom. Um, you could put some candles on here, or some towels on here, or something for you, or in like a basket, or on a tray. Put a tray on top of it, and, you know, just layering textures, layering materials, specifically vintage pieces. Yes, you spend some money on them, but they never go out of style because they've been around for hundreds of years, and like people are still buying them. So like that means they're timeless. And the older they get, the better they look because they're made with really solid materials like good wood, which is hard to find. Now everything is like plywood or good ceramics that were handmade by artisans and craftsmen a hundred years ago or stone or things that copper, things that are gonna age well. When you buy decor pieces, spend a little bit more if you can. Collect over time because there are things you'll have forever and there are things that you can move around your home and use in different rooms and use in different ways. That is the end of this haul, finally. Let me show you guys how I styled all of these pieces.
wraps up this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. There's so much more to come. Like I said, I have a shop with me coming to you from a shopping trip that I took up to Hudson, which I'm gonna share with you all. And I'll also do another style with me when I get back to Los Angeles to show you how I honestly use some of this decor and the things that I purchased furniture-wise in Hudson and some of the other really exciting items that I have um, coming into my home. I'm doing a lot of replacing of fast furniture that I bought. Don't make that mistake. If I can give you any piece of advice, take your time. I know it's hard, but if you just bought a home or you're just moving into a new apartment or whatever, take your time. Don't rush because what ends up happening is you buy things that are fine for now and then you find things you love that you want to replace them with and then you have to be bothered with selling them or giving them away instead of just not wasting the money. If things are back ordered, it's okay. There's a supply chain issue, let it be. Wait on the items, get the things you love, things that you know that you'll have forever, things that you can pass on to your kids or your grandkids, things that are gonna, you know, really give your home a soul and make it reflect you and the people that live there. That's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.